Look, thank you, everybody. Um, some of you may have heard much of this talk before, um, two days ago. Uh, I apologise for the overlap, but it'll be a lot of it will be fresh as well. So I hope you'll bear with me if you you see slides you've seen before and you hear things that, that I have to say that you've heard before. Um, I think uh, I'm not really talking about cancer registration so much as the context in which cancer registration is being used in Australia. Um, the Australian government over the last five years, I must say, has become very serious about cancer control. We complained for many years that undue little attention was given to cancer control. Now we have more attention than we can measure and so we're under a lot of pressure. The government has come up with many cancer control indicators that we have to measure. And they extend from primary prevention at a population level, to screening, to treatment, through to end of life care. And having come up with those indicators, with the support of the medical profession, and in Australia with consumer input, they, they now expect measures to be provided so they know if those indicators are being achieved. Now these indicators have been endorsed by the um, service providers with, with great enthusiasm because they feel they can use the data to improve the funding of their services. Those who fund services wish to have these data so that they can ensure that their funding is being directed and not in, the, in an appropriate direction and not being wasted. The consumers want this information for, for consumer empowerment in advocacy. And so there is broad level support and government funding to collect the data needed to measure these indicators, which we now have. So we look at the cancer registry and we see, we think, very high quality data based on morphology verification and DCO percentage and these other things. But we don't see enough data to measure all these indicators. So the question is, how can we do that? And so the way we're doing it is through data linkage. Linking the cancer registry data, a reliable spine, if you like, listing of all cancers in the community and linking to those data, other data that we need to measure these indicators. Now this includes in the area of breast cancer, linking the breast cancer data to breast screening registries. So I'll now proceed. So you've seen this before, some of you. We have universal cancer registration in Australia. Each of our eight jurisdictions legally mandates provision of data, and those data are combined uh, in Canberra in the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare to, for a national database. The problem is that is good that we collect all those data, but the data are good enough to look at incidence, mortality and survival as it affects different cancer types classified by site and histology and also as it affects different sectors of the community by age, social class, remoteness of residence, ethnicity and so on. But the data don't include TNM stage and a lot of these indicators relate to TNM stage. Also other prognostic indicators are not collected. Also we don't collect data in our registries on patterns of clinical care. And there's a big interest in ensuring by fun funders wishing to know that the patterns of care that they are funding correspond to recommendations uh, from evidence-based protocols and guidelines little information on toxicities, on late-term effects, on patient-reported outcomes and so on. So good what we have, 
but large gaps if we just look at the cancer registry data. So I showed this two days ago. We have a very high incidence of breast cancer in Australia, about twice the, um, I can't find this here, but it's at about twice the world average. We have a very low, though, at 14.0 mortality from breast cancer, only 9% above the world average, and that reflects very low numbers of cancer deaths per 100 cases. Uh, and uh, if we had look at our survival data, uh, relative survival data in international benchmarking studies, it also shows a very high survival. So that's good information, but it doesn't relate to stage, other prognostic indicators, whether treatment is appropriate, what parts of the community being treated well or treated badly. And we do see, and I won't go through this, that survival varies a lot. Not only over time, it's increasing for breast cancer, but much lower in older people, much lower in more remote populations. Indigenous Australians, not, uh, not of European extraction, the original people of Australia have very low rates. But the question is why? Are they getting bad care? Are they going late? Uh, they have access problems to care. The registry doesn't tell us this, of course. But by linking the data together, we can find out more. So this is simply the breast screen uh, data, and we, we have breast screen population-based screening in Australia for prescribed age groups to cover the population. And we link those data up with the registries to make sure that we're detecting the right number of cancers and that we're not missing too many with our interval cancer rates as an indicator of that. Uh, we also use linked breast screen data and registry data to assess over diagnosis rates. Very difficult job to do, requiring assumptions that, are, that can be often questioned, uh, but that's an important application, again, using linked data. We couldn't do that just with the cancer registry data or just with breast screen data. We need both. Just an alternative method of checking whether the overdiagnosis rates we got uh, were in fact valid by an alternative method. Looking at mortality reductions from breast cancer amongst people being screened and not being screened and making judgments about differences in risk from other factors. Uh, and uh, we seem to be getting the sort of reductions that are seen in Europe. So we're using different methodologies uh, so that we have more confidence in the data. Now, this is the major project that we're involved in. Uh, you can see at the bottom, these are the population registries. They obtain their data predominantly from cancer notifications from hospitals and from structured pathology reporting and death registration. Structured pathology reporting allows electronic transfer of data into the population registries, and we're in the process of doing that through the country at the moment. We've, the government has financed, um, over the last couple of years, pilot projects on how to include TNM, or equivalent stage, in population registries, and we are now doing, doing that. We link up those data with hospital inpatient data. Every private and public hospital in the country has to report data on diagnoses and on procedures in a standard way. There's a data set specification, and we found in prototype, prototypes that we can link those data very efficiently to the population registry, and thereby look at patterns of care in hospital and, and comorbidity in hospital. Medicare is our private health insurance system, and every Australian is, is covered. It's universal coverage. So there, we have information on medical procedures and on pharmaceutical agents, all those things not occurring in the public hospitals and private hospitals can be obtained there. Our, our radiotherapy centres all collect information on the type of radiotherapy, the doses, 
the uh, fractions, the target sites, and those sorts of characteristics, and we found we can link those in too. And we produce here a non-identifiable length data set uh, without any names on it, but with all the data linked up at an individual person level. And this is all supported by legislation and by ethics approvals. And our job is then to analyse the data in here so that we can look at stage other prognostic indicators, comorbidity, patterns of care, time to recurrence, and other outcomes. We check the quality of the data. A lot of these administrative data, there are questions about quality. We use clinical registries where they exist to make sure that the quality is appropriate. And of course, we link up with the screening um, system. Uh, we ha have undertaken prototypes using different cancers to make sure that the results are plausible and valid. And we've done that for localised non-small cell lung cancer, looking at resection rates and looking at survival rates. We've done it for colorectal cancer, all this at a population level looking at consistency of practice with guidelines and uh, looking at outcomes. I won't go into the details. The, we've also now testing the breast cancer link data and uh, we're already finding that those data show as we would expect that there's less screening <coughs> in the remote areas of Australia that are very sparsely populated where access is, is poor. There's the the tumours there are more advanced, with higher breast cancer mortality, less breast conserving surgery for early stage breast cancers in remote areas, less adjunctive radiotherapy for those who do get breast conserving surgery. So these are markers of care not agreeing with the recommended guidelines more mastectomies in these remote areas and in, and in the indigenous populations. <laughs> Where there are mastectomies, less breast reconstruction. So with these sorts of data that are quantified, you can target your promotion, your resourcing, and come up with remedial actions. And uh, we believe that whilst the quantitative data are clearly the most important data to have at the outset, we do need to have qualitative research and patient reported outcomes to work out why these differences exist. Um, are the cancers more advanced because of poor access or because of cultural reasons in the indigenous people? They don't want to uh, face the, a health system that they find very challenging or whatever. So just to conclude, um, we're using our existing cancer registry data to look at instance mortality and survival. We're looking at using linked data to include stage, other prognostic indicators, patterns of care, comorbidity, time to recurrence, and also toxicities. We're using our clinical registries to check the quality of our administrative data. And uh, we see that in the future, we want to make this a smooth operation. It's been clunky, clunky, um, inefficient uh, so far in its methodology. We need to make it much smoother. And we believe we need to combine with our quantitative data, qualitative data to understand better why differences are existing that we need to address. So thank you much, very much, David. Once again, very impressed with um, what perfection looks like in terms of cancer registry data and use of uh, integration. Only perfection when yeah, looked well, at you get from Russia there. here. You, you get in there very, very, very slowly. We're, we're, we will take us a lot longer. But this is a dream for all of us to emulate in the future to have all of our cancer registration, cancer screening, pathology. Uh, clinical, all of the data integrated together so we can provide a much clearer picture of outcome and what influences our outcome and how we can improve our services in the future. So have we got any other comments? Sorry. Yeah, David, it's a very uh, impressive, but I want to ask, have you uh, considered uh, combine the mass screening data into your systems? 
I'm, I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't uh, get mass screen data. I mean, screen data into your uh, data systems, and in the futures, because the when you screen in, you get more population covers. The data will be large. Can you share or 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 tell something about what aspect of any difficulty or not difficult in Australia? With data linkage. Yeah, data linkage. Mass screening. Because I know it's not very uh, uh, <coughs> many countries to do that. Uh, the, in, in Australia, unfortunately, um, well, we have public population based screening and we have good, very good quality data collected by the services that do that. So we know who's been invited and we know if they came or not and when, if they, when they came and how often they came and what, what was found by the screening service. So we have that for those who go through the public system, which are the majority of women, but not all women. We probably have another 24% of women who choose because they can get free mammograms privately to not go to the public system. And we have very little idea of their outcomes at the moment because they don't go through the screening system. We do know though from bilateral mammography patterns in health insurance, because all they all get paid through health insurance, which women they are and what their outcomes are, but we lack the detail that we have through the public system. We can still get interval cancer rates though, and we can still look at stage through the linked data system. Um, I may be missing a lot of your questions there, Tony. I, I was having trouble understanding, but... I know, because uh, private... I, I actually want to know how to cope with private, but you already answered that. I know this is very difficult for... You know. So I've stumbled uh, across an answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. and, and, and people will come back to argue it's not complete, you know, data set. We, we have some situation uh, in our countries, but, but you answered the question. Thank you. Yes, I think we have about three quarters of women covered altogether by both systems. Okay, very good. Thank you. We have another question from the floor. Please. I have another question. Do you report uh, the nationality of patients in your I uh, report uh, in Iran there are a lot of nationalities and uh, Australia is a young country. There are different uh, uh, nationalities living there. Is it interesting for you to find out information about incidents in different nationalities and uh, uh, does it somehow related to migration? Do you state uh, the nationality or ethnic of people? This is a um, hot topic hot topic in Australia. Uh, we, until recently, we didn't have high quality data even on our indigenous people who, have, who are high risk. So uh, recently, a lot of effort has been put into assessing indigenous status. But I and we also have information on everybody's country of birth, but that doesn't say when they arrived in Australia and uh, at the moment, we, we group them coarsely into people born overseas in different areas and different um, economic zones, if you like. Uh, there is a lot of work going on now uh, collecting uh, main language spoken at home so we can marry that up with country of birth to get a better indication of whether they are long-term Australian residents or, or otherwise. It's an area of the research and it's an area of great passion amongst the people doing the research because we believe now with a, a multicultural and a multi-ethnic community that there are groups of people there and women in relation to breast screening, for example, who are at high risk and that's not being identified because our measures aren't good enough. So that's a focus right now, but the answer is not, we sort of measure it, but not well enough. It makes Australia look more equal than it ought to at the moment, the way we're doing it. Thank you.
Very good question. Actually, I mean, the, the data that we have from the United States for the participation rates, for example, of Vietnamese, people from Vietnam or from other Asian countries suggests that, in fact, they, their participation rates are very much lower than the indigenous white population in the state. Oh, so yes. probably you would have something similar going on there. Oh, we, have, we have good information on, uh, on ethnicity in breast screening. We know their, um, uh, their country birth and the language spoken at home. We have all that information, and it's one of the performance markers. Uh, people, um, Aboriginal people, have participated much less. Generally, people from overseas, born in overseas countries who speak other languages have performed less, have uh, participated less in breast screen, but that has now come up to almost the same. So if you have a measure, then you have a challenge. If you don't measure it, you don't know about it and you don't do anything about it. But not for the rest, not in terms of treatment and, and uh, the rest of the cancer management, just the screening, we have that. Not, not for cervical, though. Cervical screening, we don't have that at the moment. Okay, if there's no other questions.